aging happens to be the single most dominant pharma factor, health factor, and lifestyle factor for the future. It's 65% of the health budget uh, is spent on those over the age of 65 in the UK, in America, in Australia, in New Zealand, in Japan. But what's really interesting is that almost all of that spending, almost every penny of it, is related to diseases which themselves are to do with getting old. If we were to do a survey of all of you here in this room right now and, and ask intimate questions about reasons why you've been to see your own doctors in the last uh, two or three years, almost all of you will have been for reasons which are nothing to do with just um, the kind of things that you had as a kid and all to do with things which are common in your age group or becoming more common. In other words, you're getting old. And what is truly fascinating, really astonishing, is how few mechanisms of aging there are, if I can just show you. In fact, we think there's probably only about seven ways in which cells can get old, um, which is fascinating. If we look here um, at the individual cell, you know, of course, that you are 86% the same as an earthworm, 23%, well, no, 86% the same as a centipede, um, maybe you're 98.5% uh, the same as an orangutan monkey. I'm sorry about that. But and the fact of the matter is that all, all cells are basically powered by a very similar genetic code. Almost all the genes are identical in almost all cells that there are in the universe, as you well know. Almost all the structures inside these cells are identical. I'm exaggerating a little bit to make the point. But the fact is that you've got mitochondria here, uh, which are power packs, which you can swap from cows to pigs to humans. They contain 1% of your genetic code. Uh, the, the, the mechanisms to actually drive day-to-day -day activity inside cells are basically the same. And looking at the science of aging, and it's truly astonishing. Because inside these cells, it appears that there may be only seven basic mechanisms of aging itself. Now, we can argue about whether it's 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11, but it ain't that many. One of them is mitochondrial genetic damage. Another is uh, genetic damage inside the nucleus. Most of the processes inside cells re uh, reproduce almost infinitely. The membrane is, uh, is rebuilt every few hours or every few days automatically. It doesn't get old. Most of these structures cannot age, but one or two do. Uh, you can get pigments and things inside the cells. You can get all kinds of rubbish outside cells. As I say, you can get genetic damage in the mitochondria, genetic damage in here. There are not that many of these mechanisms. And these simple mechanisms, which are common to all cells, probably explain why the earthworm gets old or why a man gets old or a woman gets old. They explain why the pig gets old and why a mouse gets old. And raises a fascinating possibility, which is that if we could interfere with just one of these common mechanisms inside your cells, we might find at one step of physiology, that we could find a way to improve not only the immune system of an old person, but also the healing of their skin, as well as their mental capacity and their memory, as well as enhance their liver function. Fascinating. And in the meantime, GlaxoSmithKline is structured like any old pharma company along traditional therapeutic areas and modalities, which is quite crippling when it comes to this kind of thinking. Now, I know reorganizing and doing all kinds of things to try and avoid that kind of trap, but the fact is that we're into some very interesting areas in the future.